have come and gone again, my muggle friends. I welcome you penultimately to the beginning of the end. I remain your humble host, the one who is known as Funky Monkey. And I bring you to the final chapter of this tale. A chapter so large, so filled with events, that it could not be contained in one single movie. Yes, I speak today of the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Released in November of 2010, The Deathly Hallows Part 1 begins the tale of Harry's Gap Year. Dumbledore is dead and the Dark Lord is Ascendant, but Harry now has the means to track down the Horcruxes that power Voldemort. So grab your wand and your bag of provisions and get ready to get real as we face the beginning of the end in The Deathly Hallows Part 1. The Muggle world is threatened as we open this chapter of our tale. Back at Privet Drive, the trio is reunited, along with the Order of the Phoenix, who each take a strand of Harry's hair and use a Polyjuice potion to extract Harry. But the extraction doesn't go entirely smoothly. things to expect in this film franchise, a vehicle chase came pretty low upon my list. And so, Harry and Hagrid arrive at the burrow. Mad Oz dead. The next day, new Minister of Magic Rufus Scrimgeour turns up and executes Dumbledore's will. items. And yet I dare say their usefulness will become apparent over time. The plot really kicks in at the wedding of Bill Weasley and Fleur Delacour. Yes, my muggle friends. Fleur Delacour becomes Fleur Weasley. Love is blind, as they say. The ministry has fallen. The trio escape to London, but Death Eaters are everywhere. We need to get off the streets, get somewhere safe. Everywhere except Phoenix HQ, that is. I feel I should point out at this point that the Horcrux that was gained last year was in fact a fake. It was swapped out by Sirius's brother, Regulus. Regulus Arcturus Black. And a shady character holds a clue to the real Horcrux. Flogging me words in Diagon Alley. When some ministry hag comes up and asks to see me nice and- Some ministry hag, eh? Might you have a clue who our Mr. Fletcher was referring to? Yes, my muggle friends. Once again, we run into the foul spectre of Dolores Jane Umbridge. And so our heroes use another Polyjuice to infiltrate the Ministry of Magic. That's bloody disgusting. That, my dear Ronald, is the nature of the espionage profession. Nobody ever said it was all Rivieras, Martinis and glamorous lifestyles. But no plan survives first contact with the enemy. You're lying, Dolores, and one mustn't tell lies. Ladies and gentlemen, the return of the ironic echo from year five.
our heroes apparate out and arrive in the middle of nowhere. But destroying the Horcrux proves nigh on impossible. Dumbledore sends you off to find all these Horcruxes, but doesn't tell you how to destroy them. But Dumbledore did tell our heroes how to destroy the Horcruxes. Oh, you'll find out. But not just yet. The trio decide to move on, and Hermione finally finds some good news. The Sword of Gryffindor. But carrying the Horcrux takes its toll upon them all, and it all proves too much for a Weasley to take. The Snitch gives up its secrets. If you remember back to Year One, Harry almost swallowed the Golden Snitch in his very first Quidditch match. Now that's bloody disgusting. Harry and Hermione apparate to the Forest of Dean. That night, a ghostly vision finally leads to the Sword of Gryffindor. But the Horcrux won't die easily. Luckily, Ron doesn't abandon his friends. And so it falls to him to conquer his fears and put an end to the necklace. The trio apparate to Xenophilius Lovegood. Well, it's the sign of the Deathly Hallows, of course. And we hear the tale of the three brothers. In short, three wizard brothers bridged a river, cheating death. Death, feeling cheated, pretended to congratulate these wizards with three powerful items. A mighty wand of elderwood, a stone that would resurrect the dead, and a cloak of invisibility that would never become visible. Naturally, this being death, these items had a sting in the tail. And the third brother just spent the rest of his life hiding from death until he was ready to die. When combined, these three items make up the Deathly Hallows. But our heroes are betrayed. And captured. And so our heroes are brought to Malfoy Manor. Luckily, the rewards of mercy apparate themselves to the rescue. Could you take us with you? Of course, uh, I'm an elf. Looks for me. Elves. Powerful indeed they are in the magics. And even when Bellatrix tries to tip the balance, Dobby evens the odds. One does not lightly discount a house elf, my friends. Our heroes apparate away, but Lestrange didn't miss. <laughs> 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 And we bring this half of the chapter to a close on a very dark note. There. But the story does not end here, my muggle friends. Seven days hence we shall bring this tale to conclusion. For now, I confess that I cannot put this one into the House of Love. In splitting this film in two, they've given it some breathing room. Perhaps too much. The old complaint of uneven pacing creeps upon us again, as most of the scenes in the forest are much slower. And while they show character and bring home emotion, they don't further the plot, or bring the Dark Lord to task. The action set pieces manage to keep the 140 minute runtime from seeming too stretched, and the first hour is a whirling chaotic adrenaline rush. But the maudlin second hour almost seems like an entirely different film. And the emotional climax rings truer than one might expect. But this story is far from over, and the dark times will come to a head soon. But as ever, we shall get to that. Let us reconvene one last time, seven days hence, to put an end to the tale of the Deathly Hallows, and the tale of Harry Potter itself. Spellcasting! D-I-S-M-I-S-S -S.